I've been in India since uh, 2018. I'm staying in a small city in South India, in Tamil Nadu. And get up, guys! It's your boy Omkar. So, welcome to yet another episode of Monday Podcast, and we are going to interview a person today. He has been living in India for a while now. So. Let's talk to him. Let's uh, hear about his experiences, like staying in India. How has it been? And yeah, so Ben, please introduce yourself. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Benjamin Jenks. I run a YouTube channel by uh, my name, and I also run an India travel blog called ChaiNomad.com. I've been in India since uh, 2018, and yeah, thanks for uh, having me on here, Omkar. You're welcome. You're welcome. So, like. Uh, Uh, how old are you at the moment? I'm 39 years old. <laughs> wow, great! Yeah. And you have been in India from like 2018, right? That's Two right. Years. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's that's a whole lot of like time. And uh, like people would be like interested in knowing like how has it been for you to stay for an extended period of time in India? Yeah, it's been great staying here. I uh, I'm staying in a small city in South India in Tamil Nadu, and I'm loving it. I have a nice place that I rent out. I'm able to. I'm not too far from Chennai, so if I want to take a trip, you know, the airport's not too far away. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, the weather's a little bit much at times during the summertime, but I have aircon and you know, I'm surviving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially in South India, it's get it gets like pretty hot during summers and like it's it's also humid. You might be on the coastal side, right? Near to the coast. Yeah, a few hours from the coast. Okay. Yeah. So guys, uh, let's get started with this interview. And we have a cer- certain set of questions that I I planned for this. So let's get started. So Ben, my first question to you is. How and when did you start traveling? Well, I was lucky. My grandmother was a big traveler. She was a guidance counselor at a high school, and so she would take kids traveling. So it was her dream to take all of her grandkids traveling. So when I was in the sixth grade, my grandma took me on a school for two weeks to go to Europe. So I went to Portugal with my grandmother.、Um, that has continued up until this day. I'm lucky to be here in India and travel around. But、uh, yeah, that was the beginning. She was the inspiration. Wow, that's really great to have someone in your family that has been your inspiration. For me, in my family, there is a traveler, as you might say, like your grandparents. Ah,、uh, like my grandparents have been stuck to a place for a whole lot of time, and it's not、yeah. in my family. So,、yeah. for me, starting traveling was a bit difficult, but it it has been great so far. I hope it has been like like it it has been same for you as well. Like for all travelers, it's. It's great. It's a great experience.、Uh, so moving on to the next question, what、uh, exactly motivated you to become a traveler at the first place? Yeah, it's difficult to put it on one thing, but I would just say that you know, for a long time before I would go to bed each night, I would think about traveling. I would read books about traveling and think, oh, that's you know, I want to go out and do that. And、uh, it was, you know, it actually caused a lot of suffering at first because I'd be working a job and I wasn't traveling. And before bed, you know, you're like, I can't wait to go. Every day, you're like, I just can't wait to、yeah. start traveling. So, so yeah, I think、uh, I think that that feeling probably started for me. <laughs> That's great, guys. So the next question is, why India? Why did you move to India? Like, what interested you about India? Sure. I came to India in 2018 in the beginning to meet up with some friends who I'd met online. We were doing some spiritual retreat type stuff, so I came for a spiritual retreat, and I spent three weeks, and I just liked it. You know, when I went back to the USA, I was just I had worked online, and I just kept thinking about oh, you know, it'd be nice to go back to India. So when my lease ran up in in the USA, <coughs> excuse me. I was just thinking, like it took me like a month of deciding, and I was like, "Yeah, I'll just go to India."、Um, since I can do my job there as well, it wasn't really like,、uh, you know, I wasn't losing a whole lot. I wasn't married.、Um, you know,、okay. there are other reasons why India was advantageous apart from. I mean, the main reason was just that I liked it, but it also, for a U.S. citizen, you can get a ten-year visa relatively easily to travel in India.、Mm-hmm. So that、mm-hmm. was that was a big draw.、Um, so yeah. 
okay so like it, it's like uh, when you get to know about all this information you know travel becomes much easier yeah and you could you could exactly plan out like how much time would i like to spend in a country mm-hmm. so for you it i haven't heard about any uh, like until now i haven't heard about anybody who has been for such a long period in a certain country yeah for me i wouldn't uh, like i would keep on traveling i wouldn't stop like uh, that is what i have in my mind because maybe of my age like yeah. i am quite young i am only 22 yeah. so that is why i feel like keep on traveling go for a year or so for traveling yeah. and then plan on staying at a place where you like it what country did you like uh, uh, before india what how did you travel and like how did you end up in india like do we, did you go to certain other countries as well or like directly mm-hmm. to india yeah i so in college i went to australia for 6 months and i did some studies there i've been to mexico uh, on a number of trips uh i've been to canada of course i've been to portugal in europe uh, a couple times once with my grandmother and then um uh, once with some other family members i've been to the netherlands on a trip by myself my first solo trip i've been to the dominican republic which isn't too far it's a island uh, south of the us for a vacation with my girlfriend at the time and i've also mm-hmm. uh I hitchhiked around the US on a long-term traveling trip. So, I did okay. over 25,000 uh, miles hitchhiking around the US and a little bit in Canada. 25,000. Yeah, yeah. So, uh yes, for a while that was the project that uh after I worked this one job, I was around uh, maybe 28 or 29 and I just had always wanted to travel. And after working at a job for 6 years, I was like, all right, you know, for some reason hitchhiking was the way that I uh, wanted to travel. I noticed you also uh, have done some hitchhiking in Mumbai, so yeah. I thought that was that was a cool uh, coincidence or connection. Um but uh yeah, that would be the main long-term travels that I did. Um so and it was really beautiful to see my own country and meet so many people that way. It's mm-hmm. a really uh I don't know what to say. You have a lot of experiences when you're hitchhiking, you know, for the good and for the yeah. bad. Yeah. Really uh, teach you a exactly. lot. Exactly. You you I guess you make a lot of connections while hitchhiking rather than yeah. just taking a bus or a train to the destination. So it's uh it's like an experience. Yeah, that's what I can say. And I think it's also you can make some deeper connections with people. Some of the people who take you in, you would form more of a bond with than maybe people who I've met in a hotel or on a tour. Yeah. They'll even message me a little bit today. I got a message from a guy the other day who who gave me a ride. You know, so maybe I I think that's cool, you know, the bonds you can make with local people. Um so so what was the first change you noticed uh when you came to India and uh what and was it expected or not expected? change what do you mean change in myself or change in uh, india change in change the life? environment like you have been uh, like in the us and from us to india like there is a change right so what right. uh how was it like it's a big so, change something more specific yeah yeah it's a, it's definitely when i came or my aunt and my mother came recently so I remember after we took our hotel or excuse me took a taxi ride to my house they were just blown away they're like oh my god this is like otherly worldly different right now <laughs> and you know it's been a couple of years so I I still remember that feeling a little bit but um I mean the the main thing of course is just how many people you see <laughs> on a daily basis but there are so many things that are different um that uh you know cows in the street, you know, bullet carts going down the street, people taking mm-hmm. bicycle rickshaws. Um yeah, I could go on. It, there's a big difference. So uh yeah. yeah. Constant noise like <laughs> in the background. There is a lot of noise, yeah, in the city. Yeah. How was like your exact plan? Do you uh did you had anything in your mind before moving to India like uh had you planned it before? or like you it was just an instantaneous decision like yeah let, let's go it took me about a month to decide like i said i was thinking about oh it sounds nice to live there um and then yeah within a month i'm like yeah let's go i don't have 
you know, any set plans here at the moment. So mm -hmm. um, if I wanted to move back, I could always move back. And uh, yeah, so I sold my stuff, you know, my lease was up and it wasn't too difficult actually to make the transition. Okay. So. Wow. Okay. So uh, if, if you, if somebody like me, uh, if yeah. I wanted to move to another country, so where should I start? Where do you want to go? Like, uh, suppose, let's say Ukraine. Okay. So, yeah, where would you start? I would research the visa process on how easy it's going to be to get there, especially with the lockdown. That's That would be, you know, so take care of the technical aspects. I knew from coming here before about the visa um, because I had had a friend here. So I would, I would research that and see, you know, how much time the visa will get you. Because typically there's what, like a 30 day, 60 day, 180 day. There's a short tourist visa you can typically get that's not too difficult. So I would just consider that and think where you most want to go. Or maybe during this period, I would have a list of like five places and I don't know, I would look at all of them and see which one is the most advantageous um, mm -hmm. if I wanted to see a bunch of places. places. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, let's move on to the next question. Yeah. Uh, so how are like finances over here? Like how are the expenses over here as compared to back home, back US? Mm -hmm. Well, the cost of living in India is 68% lower than it is in the US. So many things are much cheaper. Um, cheaper. Yeah. I, uh, my rent was 825 US dollars for a one bedroom apartment in, the, in Austin where I lived. And here it's $160 for a two bedroom apartment. So yeah, it's, it's much, uh, that, that's a drastic change. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah, you can eat out at restaurants. I'm still, you know, single. So I, I eat out at restaurants a lot and a typical meal is going to be a few dollars here and a typical mm -hmm. meal in the U S you know, is going to be $15. So yeah, it's a lot that, cheaper. Yeah. 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 Okay. So also, uh, while managing your finance, if suppose, uh, if you are a digital nomad, as you said, you uh, you can work from the internet. Like you just need a laptop to work. Uh, so if somebody wanted to get started with it, like how would they get uh, start? Started as a digital nomad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would identify three to five digital jobs that you would have some interest in doing and some experience doing. I started as a writer, a content writer, so. I would write blog posts for people. And then as I was doing that, I started working in a specific industry. So I was writing blog posts in a specific industry. And then, you know, five, fast forward five years, when I applied to a company in that industry, I had a number of experience, uh, or I had a lot of experience already to get a job in that industry, which was also online. So writing is a good way to start. Um, virtual assistants, um, development or developing soft software or apps online you do videos so video editing mm -hmm. for people freelance video editing um, you could start your own business if you have a certain amount of money uh, to to get started on it you know you have your YouTube channel so maybe that, that's an option for you um, you know as long as you have enough money to go a while until it gets going but um, those are some options but yeah i mean if you were to just google make money online you're going to get like 50 to 100 options choose three to yeah. five you know pick one and then just find a good course that can teach you how to do that is the way that i would approach it <laughs> because uh, you know uh, because of the internet and the era of information it has yeah. become a lot easier as compared to our far, like the previous generation and the generation before that they wouldn't have imagined like if uh, like we could earn something on right. the internet like mm -hmm. it's it's like taking something from the cloud and yeah that's tangible and that's yours so yes. it's it's a different thing and it's a different experience yeah, so, yeah. for a traveler it's uh you know what a what an opportunity we have to be able to travel you know if you were to go to ukraine and you built up a way to make money online you could make money over there and continue to live there or travel continue your travels so so yeah it's yeah I like the history of India, you know, to be in a place that's so much older than the United States. I mean, the temple in town is like, I don't know, thousands of years old, you know, and just this, this temple, there's in my small city, 
you know, the, the major historic buildings in the U.S. are like 100 years old. So there's yeah. a vast difference in uh, how old things are, which, which changes a lot, you know, gives me a different perspective on the way the world is, which I think is really cool. I love the, I love that there's so many people. Um, there's a way Indian people have of dealing with other people that you can tell it's almost just like they're, they're used to like having so many people around at all times. One specific example is the drivers, you know, you're driving in a car or a taxi and you're just running into major traffic or a cow in the road or just something that would be <laughs> irritating, you know, but most people are very chill about how they handle things as if they're just kind of used to it, back up, you know, go about their business in, in a really uh, friendly, uh, accepting sort of way, which I think is really cool. The final thing is uh, the diversity of India it has everything that uh, you know I could want to see you know from the deserts of Rajasthan to the big cities or the cosmopolitan cities say Mumbai or Bangalore to mm. um, to the nature of uh, the Himalayas or the, the beautiful heights that I think. yeah so I mean for a tourist destination I think it has it all so yeah grateful to be here yeah okay so three things that you didn't like that much yeah three things that i didn't like well it's also a lot different to be surrounded by so many people so it's while i like it at times you know certain parts of the day or you're taking a trip it's like <laughs> i wish we could get rid of some of these people so i can get to my destination a little bit faster that would be nice um certain areas to being a foreigner it, it just you you're different so you're sort of marked out and attention is called to you in ways that's not always uh nice at times you know or people trying to scam you i know it happens to indian people too you know but in certain destinations people trying to take your money or people just you can tell just kind of seeing you as a way like you know it's like they're not you might think you're a friend with someone and then a few weeks down the road they're like oh here's how, you know they're they're finding a way to like try to find, get money out of you which is um a little bit uh you know just not not it doesn't always feel good but it makes sense and uh overall most people are very nice and hospitable um also just in some of the places too maybe the uh you know i wish there was a better rubbish removal removal service from uh yeah. especially where i'm living. there are some beautiful places like bangalore is really nice there's some nature places here but in some places you know some of the trash is a little bit um you know, clean that up a little bit but, you know, overall though you know I, I really like living in india and uh it just it just feels like a good happy fun place to be at this time so yeah wow that was quite an insight so how has uh, covid affected your travels at the moment so we had the lockdown for quite a while now it's been 3 months or so since it started and had it had the lockdown not happened i would have enjoyed going up to the himalayas you know during the summertime and continuing some travels um also going to a place like Jaipur is, is next on my list or maybe go at some point. Um, so yeah, I haven't been able to travel, but even locally to just go out into the city, I used to go out and take photographs or go to a restaurant and not to be able to do that or make videos locally has been a challenge. So I prefer not to like make videos in my room or in my house. So, um, but you know, it's smart at this point not to, to take risks and if we can all uh, stay home as much as possible. Seems like that's the smartest approach. So overall though, it, living in india during this time has been great and uh i've been able to get food i've been able to have everything that i need and i feel safe where i'm at so i'm i'm really happy so okay as you said you like the history of india how much of the culture did you understand about it it's difficult to say i feel like i still get a lot of things wrong uh you know sometimes in my videos i'll be talking about something and then people on the account will be like wait a minute that's that's way wrong so <laughs> that's been helpful though because that's taught me a lot you know like making mistakes is a good way to learn certain things but yeah it feels it feels like i still have so much to learn about indian culture and uh hinduism being such a popular religion here and having such an influence on the culture i've done a lot of reading i like to read so you know i'm reading books and uh, novels about india to try to 
have that perspective or as, as much as I can in a couple of years. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a newbie. I'm not an expert on Indian culture by any, uh, any sense of the, the word at this point. But. but I guess, I guess as compared to somebody back home, yeah. you might have known a lot of things as compared to them, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. in my blog, I feel like I'm trying to help someone coming here for the first time. So in that capacity, I feel like I can help a lot of people gain a lot in a short period of time. Compared to an Indian who's lived here their whole life, I know nothing, so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, guys, that was it. Uh, ben, do you have anything like uh, for any last message for our fellow travelers who would like to travel? No last message. Just thanks for having me, Omkar. If anyone has any specific questions, feel free to reach out at me. Um, if you put a link or whatever to my stuff, so I'd be happy yeah, to answer. Yeah. Uh, so, guys, go on and subscribe to his channel. He all, uh, as he said before in to the introduction, he makes uh, a lot of videos about over the, uh, in Tamil Nadu, and he has been traveling a lot. So, yeah, go check out his channel. Give it a subscribe, like his videos, and share. That's about it. And see you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.